Good evening, everybody. This is Bonda Evans. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Trying to get everything situated. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Okay. It's time for to ready. Okay. Let's see who we got here today. Who's gonna be our first one checking in? Tyree Gibbons. From Mobile, Alabama. We got Catrice Allman. Hey, positive affirmations by Bonda Evans. Let me know where y'all coming from now. Tyree from um, Mobile. Where you from, Miss Allman? Detroit. The D. The D. Miami is in the house. Karen James. Miami. Yes, indeed. Get that beautiful weather there. Oh, I'm telling you. That vitamin D, I was just saying to my daughter that I'm just believing God that I'm going to be able to get down there and be a, a what you call it, a snowbird, because I'm ready to do this. Okay, we got Betty uh, Boatman from Maryville, Tennessee. Maryville, Tennessee. Okay, let's see who else we got. Had to get everything ready. I'm back kind of. It was so nice. It was. And, you know, I, I ain't going to play Detroit like that. It was 45 degrees, but let me tell you something, baby. That 45 degrees felt like a steak dinner. It was feeling good today, okay? So I ain't going to knock it, okay? Let me stop. You know, don't don't be that way, Vonda. I ain't going to be knocking nothing. It was nice today, but yesterday was really nice. It was really nice. So let's see who else we got. Come on. Come on in. The sun tricked us. It did. Mm -hmm. Tanya Walker. Hello, beautiful. Hello, queen. You know, I was out today. As people are coming in, I'm, I'm going to, you know, shout you out. And uh, I was at two different locations getting food today. Belinda Blue from Rayfield, North Carolina. I uh, went to a school in Greensboro. And I ran into two queens. And, you know, two separate locations. Hey, Wendy Ogle. I know it. Good night, Vonda. Hey, girl. And you know what they said? They said, Queen, keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because we, for once, got somebody that, you know, understands our challenges and is not afraid to speak on that. So, you know what? That always um, really gets me going. Um, it makes me feel that I'm helping people, and that's feel good. And, and Nitra Foster, hey, sis, hey, auntie, I can't hear what you have to say because I need some positive energy today. I got something to talk about, okay? I do. Keisha Bell, hey, I'm rocking with you tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Sharon Cheney, hello. Uh, what's going on? And this is what I'm saying to you ladies. We got to get our mind right, okay? You know... Um, when we was 30 and 40, many of us didn't make proper financial decisions. So now, you know, our money is right. Our credit is right. You know, that's right. We got to get our head right. We got to get back to being the queens that we are in other areas. Because in other areas, we are boss queens, chicks. We run in businesses. Um, you know, we got high jobs. You know, we got authority, we got positions, but our head ain't right. And the reason why is, you know, we've gone through hormonal changes or going through them, and we've never been old before. We always been young, middle aged. You know, now, you know, pounds just seem like you wake up in the morning, you 10 pounds heavier. Okay. Your body is changing. Um, you know, you start to see yourself and you looking different. And it's a lot going on. And what we got to do is 
get a hold of, you know, where we are. We've got to accept that and we got to move from that. But everything else is cool. Yes, mental health is so important. I'm working on that and self-love. Let me say this to you. You can have all the money in the world, but if your head ain't right, okay, if, if you're not focused and proper and in order, it don't mean nothing, okay? And that is where we got to get to, okay? And part of that is for many of us, you know, we never had no problem dating Andrea Parks. Hello, Ms. Bonda. We ain't never had no problem dating, getting no man. Now, it's like the being are winning. The men out here winning. You know, as my uncle said, uh, men don't get old, they get broke. So what a 60-year-old man can do, he can get a 40, a 30, a 20, a 50. He has more of a variety. We are limited. We are limited. You know, if you 40 or 50, some 70 want you, you know, and you like, well, I don't want to do the 70 year old, but unfortunately, you know, there are not a lot of men our age. It used to be a time when you were 16, you know, you say, what, somebody 19, they too old, you know, or, you know, we wanted them close in age. Well, that ain't even really no possibility no more. Okay. All right. Hey, Anthony Green. Hey, B, what's up? And what I mean by that is, is that a lot of men are just not attracted to older women. You know what I'm saying? And all our lives, we were just waiting to get to the point where we, you know, our credit was good. And then it seemed like now all this other stuff is going on. So we need to refocus on getting our mind right, having our mental health right, focusing on things that are important. And that is self-care, self-care. That is extremely, extremely important. Um, somebody said to me recently, Darlene from Savannah, Georgia, are you, do you really mean you not seeing nobody? Don't you be getting lonely? And, you know, we talked about that on a segment of my podcast about being alone and being lonely and how the enemy will tell us you're lonely just because you're alone but you can be lonely in a marriage. You can be lonely in a room full of a uh, of hundred people. But what you have to be able to do is say, I may be alone, but I'm not lonely, okay? See, when you start buying into that, I'm lonely, I'm sad, you, you getting into enemy territory. And what you speak over yourself is what you become. Stop speaking over that, I'm alone, don't nobody understand me. Hey, Wanda, what's up, girl? Denise from Mac, uh, Hawkins, Mac, Randy, so true. Stop speaking that over you. There is power of life and death in the tongue. And when you start, well, I'm just lonely. I ain't going to never get nobody. You are then believing. You're walking into your own affirmation. You got to speak over you. I'm going to get a husband. I'm going to get a wife. I'm healing. I'm doing better. Speak positive over your life. Stop speaking negative. You know, but well, I look in the mirror and I, my, I, I'm body shame. Stop doing that. When you look in the mirror, this is what I want you to say. Thank God I'm alive. Because let me tell you something. We can count 10 people on one hand this year that ain't with us. Thank God I'm alive. I got a couple pounds, but I'm alive. I'm in my right mind. I'm moving. I, I, I'm able to get up and go to the toilet in the morning. Do you know how many people are unable to do that? And so when you start to see the cup half full instead of half empty, you're going to feel better because you're speaking over your life positively. And that's what I got to get you to do. Forget what you see. Well, I used to be 20 pounds. Okay, that's over with. Okay, you used to have a long hair. That's over with. Let that go. You know, walk in boldness in this new season. Thank God you're not the person that you used to be. How you used to, you know, you, you growing now. You able to tell people, no, I don't want to go. I, I, you don't want to go out drinking? No, I don't want to. Why? What's wrong with you? I just not even doing that anymore. 
You know, I don't want my head to hurt the next day. I don't want my mouth to be dry. I don't want to do all of that no more. Okay. And it's okay. And I, we need to get into the part of the season where it's okay to take care of ourselves. It's okay to jump on the podcast and we in each other living room. I'm in your living room. You in my living room. We're sharing. We're growing. Uh, we're not eating certain things anymore. You know, uh, everything ain't got to be fried and pickled with a whole bunch of salt on it. We're learning to reinvent ourselves. And what we need to start doing, you got to get in that head. You got to get in that head because all this other stuff don't matter if your head ain't right. Okay. And so we need to start talking about that. And for me personally, um, like I said, I was running in and out of relationships so much that I felt, you know, I can't be by myself. What what people going to think? You know what I'm saying? Um, I can't be, I, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be in my big king size bed by myself. And I had to start to learn that if I want to get the kind of person that I think I deserve, I got to become her. I got to become the woman that say, I'm not attracted to riffraff no more. I'm not attracted to bling bling. I'm not attracted to, to uh, being sexually put down. I, I, I'm not into that no more. Okay. I'm an old quality man, but I had to become a quality woman in order so that I can attract a quality man. And quality don't got nothing to do with no JD or PhD. It got to do everything with where your mind is. And if your mind ain't right, I don't care how many D's you got. D, D, E, D, J, D, P, H, D, G, E, D. I don't care how many. You can have all in D's, but you're not going to be right. And so now it's time to just pause for a minute, get your head right, so you can become the woman, okay, that's going to attract a quality male because you got your life going on and you doing your thing right and you walking like a queen. And you upholding yourself. I see y'all out here, queens. Y'all looking good. Y'all looking wonderful. Y'all looking, got your hair laid, smelling good, looking good. Okay. And you doing it for yourself. Right before I jumped on here, right? I said, uh, let me put some perfume on. The enemy say, why? I said, so I can smell myself. <laughs> I don't need nobody to smell my Chanel. I want to smell it for me. I want to smell it on me. OK, I want to be able to put makeup on for me. I want to get my hair done for me. I want to wear nice clothes for me. OK, I want to celebrate me because I don't survive things that would kill people. And I'm glad I'm just standing. So oh, I want to go back to London and chill out. I get what you're saying, but I'm saying that's where we are. And we have to you have to start speaking over your life positively. And, you know, we've been talking about the trauma bond and how, you know, we getting hooked up with the same kind of man over and over. And we talked about love bombing and trust and dependency. Now we're talk about something called resignation and submission. And what happens at that point? At this point of resignation and submission, we just give up. Well, that's all right. Uh, I just don't want to fight no more. If that's what you say, that's okay. I just don't want to argue. I don't want to get no argument no more. Whatever you say, I'm just tired. I just, I don't want no problem. And we give in. Uh, we allow the situation that we're in to control our destiny. You know, we only want to come in at night. Like, damn, I got to go home. But some of us figure a slice is better than nothing. Wow, well, I, 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 girl, I got to have me a slice, even if that's a crumb. And what happens, the more you accept from someone, the less they give to you. So if you accept somebody coming in your house when they want to, they're going to continue to do that. They're not going to get better. Well, like you say, it takes too much. Oh, Kawan say it takes too much work to be like Bonda. Let me tell you this, Kawan. It took me a good 55 years to become her. Okay. And I'm still becoming her. Why? Because I got tired of the way that I was allowing people to treat me 
that I didn't deserve. And I always kept saying, why they do this to me? I did this for them. You know, I bought this for them. I did this. Why they keep treating me? Why? Because you keep letting them. Because you keep letting them. Because when they late, if you tell them to be here at six and they come at eight, you say, oh, let me get my stuff ready. You never, you don't have boundaries. And as a result, when they want to say, look, I'm in the neighborhood. I want to stop by for a minute. Okay, the door open. Just come on in. You don't have boundaries. Uh-oh, she trying to get herself together, uh, acting funny. Let me go over there and bust her balloon, okay, and wreak havoc in her life. Well, at least he back. See, you, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't going to talk to him. Then me and him going to be, I'm going to ghost him. Then he going to be trying to get back with me and then all that toxic stuff. Ain't nobody got time for that toxic. I'm going to put you on block, and then, but I'm going to be on another page, and I'm going to be spying on what you're doing. Ain't nobody got time for that. When a man loses respect for you, it's a wrap. You'll never get it back. Respect is like virginity. Once you lose it, you can't go get it. That's just what it is. And you think that, well, you know, back in 90, 1985, shoot. Girl, 1985 done gone and left, okay? You need to leave that alone because I was running stuff with him. Well, you ain't running them no more. After he done had 15 affairs and four kids on you, you are not running nothing. So you get to a point where you just submit. You just say, you know what? Well, Anne is better than Nan. You start caring about your appearance. Start wearing makeup. Oh, I gained a couple pounds. It don't matter. I don't care no more. I'm just, you're existing. The things that used to mean something to you, you don't want to do them anymore because you've submitted to somebody else's toxicity as the standard in your life. And you got to stop. They're giving you whatever they want and you accepting it. And because you're accepting it, it's not going to get better. Well, one day it will. It's going to get better. Let me tell you something. The way you start out is the way you hold out. When you start coming in here and you letting people uh, come in and out your house anytime they want to and lay up with you and anybody else and you accepting rotation and all of that stuff, you're going to get that because that's what you allow. But when you get to the point where you say, you know what I'm saying? I got boundaries. Eric. Uh, no, give your wife life, give your husband life. It's not over, okay? Woo, you talking to me. You got to you gotta be able to do this. So please give me some advice to a 21-year-old queen. Hold on, young lady. I'm going to get you. And here's the situation. You know what they say? Youth is wasted on the young. See, if we knew what we knew now, we'd be some bad women. We would have made much better choices. Many of us would have been married. Why? Because we would have chosen the man that was good for us not good looking to us okay it's a difference you can have a good man that good to for that's good for you has all the trappings everything of a he i don't like the way he dressed oh he don't make me feel oh you know what i'm saying he don't girl you're thinking about the wrong thing I don't want to think about nobody make me feel like, oh, we, when it's come to time to pay the mortgage, you ain't got no money. Oh, we don't pay no bills. Okay. Oh, we, you know what I'm saying? Don't pay no mortgage. Oh, we don't do none of that. So you can keep that. Oh, we, okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we like champagne. It's good to have it every now and then, but you don't need it all the time. Okay. You just don't. And at some point in time, you got to make choices. The women that we see who are happily married are many times were with men that they were able to say, you know, maybe he's not that good looking. Maybe he doesn't dress sharp or anything. But you know what? He's a person that has longevity. He wants to be in a committed relationship. He has values. Those are the things that have to be attractive to you not the way you know you know he smell not the way you know he dress not the way he's slanging that it can't be none of that 
that's not what's important. What's important is for a relationship to work is his values and his morals. And we miss that. I got to have somebody, ooh, listen, when he come in, he looking good. You know what I'm saying? All the women want him, run from him. Run from a man that every woman wants because it ain't nothing but a problem. Okay? I got a girlfriend and um, her first husband, you know, used to be Dapper Dan. I mean, killing him. Okay? The second one, he wear Belgo shoes. She driving a Mercedes, got the whip and everything. I said, girl, won't you do something with your man? You know? She said, uh-uh. Because see, the first one, he was all into that. And you couldn't tell him nothing. The second one, he just want to make me happy. So he can stay in them Velcro shoes. Okay? See, that's your problem. You trying to up your man to make him look like you. If he want to wear Velcro and you meet him, let him wear Velcro. Because the first thing that he told her, I can't give you the world, but I'm going to damn sure try to give you what I can. I'm going to build you a house the way you want it, and I'm going to get you a house, and we're going to have a house in Arizona. And he worked his butt off to make sure that she had that. But what it was is that second husband, he was a regular guy, but he believed in longevity, morals, and values. That's what he believed in. And she began to love him, not for because he sassy and he know how to lay me down, but for the fact that he was consistent. He showed up. He wasn't with other women. He wanted to make her happy by doing things for her. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. But get them, baby. Listen, keep them in. Because let me tell you something. Every time I try to put a man and took him out of Velcro shoes, he, him and them new shoes walk right on away to be with somebody else. Okay. Because I'm trying to, you know, bring him up to my level. Uh-uh. The next one, if I meet you in Velcro, you're going to stay in Velcro. Uh-uh. Okay. I'll be in Louboutin. You don't need no, you, God ain't called you to do that. <laughs> That's not your calling. That's my calling, okay? All right? But we got to get men who want consistency, who show up, okay? Not, uh-oh, she needs some money. I'm, I ain't going to call her now. I'm, I'm going to give it about a week so she can go find it for somebody else. And then he'd be like, oh, about two weeks later, what's up? You good? Yeah. Did that, did that situation work out? Yeah, I'm so glad. Okay, can I come by? Hell no, because when I needed you, I couldn't find you. Now, you. now things is all right, and God done provided me. He, you trying to come over and slip over. The devil's a liar. Stop dealing with people when, think, when you need something, they run from you instead of running to you. Then when everything resolves itself, here they come around, sneaking around, trying to smell around, liking your picture, liking your post, and all of that stuff. Uh-uh, boo-boo. You're going to hold off on that. You know what I'm saying? See, everybody wants you when you don't need no support, when you're paying your bills, when your health is good. They run they run into you. But then the minute that something goes wrong, they run in from you. Them ain't, the, them ain't your people. Them ain't your people that they want to talk about your situation. Them ain't your people. Your people is a person that say, girl, I ain't talked to you. I want to see you. I'm worried about you. Girl, what's up? You know what I'm saying? You know, that they can, you know, as my father said, the eyes are the mirror to the soul. That they can look at you and say, girl, what's up? I ain't heard from you. I, what's going on, baby? They're the kind of people that you need to be with. Not the ones, oh, she, she needs some money. Uh, her, her, her child then got locked up. I ain't got no buy money, so I ain't gonna call her boy bye, boy bye, because that's what you are, boy. Because a real man gonna step up and say, Baby, what's wrong with you? Let me lift that load. Oh, uh, let me call you back. What's up? Oh, uh, I'm just trying to put together this, uh, this desk. All right, hit me up when you finish, huh? You mean to tell me I got a need and you ain't trying to be there for me 
to, to help me. Why? Because I began to just start settling. Okay. And just saying, well, you know, that's just how he is. You know, that's all right. You know how he is. And we continue to let people mistreat us because we believe and we value their presence. But really, they don't respect us. Eric said, I would give my first wife money to pay the bills and we go overseas and get back. And then, then they about to cut the lights off. How? That would be my lady's consented to in season. All right, Kevin. But what I'm saying to you is people ain't taking care of business. And so my point being to you is stop submitting to what you don't deserve. Felicia, my deceased husband liked to wear overalls. He had a roof in business. Now listen to this. He was truly the best man. He checked all the boxes I've ever known. He was good. He was 20 years older, had never been married, and he said he had met the one. Okay? But, I mean, now I'm going to say y'all can't see her. Felicia, she looking spry, looking good. That man was focused on making his woman happy. Okay? When you love somebody, I'm talking about you really love them. You think about it at night. How can I make their, their life better? My girlfriend, I was talking to her yesterday. And she said, you know, I lay awake at night thinking, how can I make my children's life better? I said, damn. Think about that. A man laying up at night thinking, how can I let take this load off Vonda? How can I make her life better? What is it that she needs that I need to be able to do for her? Those are the kind of people that we need in our life. Not people who like, uh-oh, they got some problems. I'm going to call her back when she when, when it resolves itself. Who want that? But time and time again, we keep allowing people to uh, come into our lives who are just taking, you know what I'm saying? And who are just taking and uh, not giving. And we've got to stop. We too old for that. You know what I'm saying? We too old for that. If you've never read real true love, just know you will never forget it. That's what Felicia said. Absolutely. See, let me tell you something which I believe. It's better to have been loved and lost love than to never be loved at all. And thank you, Sandra. Preach by my proud of you for sharing with some others. Even if you only had that love for six months, you know what it's like for somebody to love you. As a parent, I show up because I want to show my children this is what a real man who love you going to do. They're going to make sure that you good. And then they're going to worry about themselves. But you got to be an example of what love is. Love is long suffering. Love going to show up when you need it. Love going to be there. Love it will come and, 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 and shovel your snow at nighttime so when you get up in the morning, you don't slip and fall. That's love. And so many times we attribute love to what it make us feel like. You know, oh, every time I be around him, I just get these butterflies in my stomach. That's not love. That's infatuation. Love shows up. Love will make you get another job so that you can buy your woman a Mercedes because you know that's the car of her dream. That's love. Love will make you come home at night when you out with your boys and they trying to do a little something that you ain't into. Love will say, I got to go home tonight. That's what love will do. Love will say, uh-oh, I know he up about something and I ain't even into this, so I ain't going to be with him. Love will say, I want to be with my woman tonight. Saturday night, we just going to watch a movie. That's what love will do. And so you have to be able to know what you want from love. Okay? How you define it. And stop accepting what you don't deserve because it's better than nothing. And too many times, because they're not enough men, 
we start to accept what we don't deserve. Prime example, I want you to take a listen to this and tell me what you think about this. And he just proposed to his boyfriend. So now I got a husband and a fiance. And let me let y'all hear that one more time. That's my husband. And he just proposed to his boyfriend. So now I got a husband and a fiance. One more time. That's my husband. And he just proposed to his boyfriend. So now I got a husband and a fiance. That is settling for what you don't deserve. That's what that is. Now, many of us may say, what in the world? That's just outrageous. He been married to you for 20 years and been having an affair with, with Miss Sally or, or, or for, with Felicia for 15. He been married to you for 20 years. He got two and three kids outside, one with Felicia and one with Regina. He been married for you for 20 years. And you know, when he goes, say he going with his friends, you know, he going with his woman. We all can find ourselves accepting what we don't deserve. Why? Because we rather have a slice than nothing. So we began to say, it's okay. We accept it. How do we say, well, I would never condone my man with another woman. But the law says that if you fail to say something when you should, you've consented to that behavior by acquiescing to it. So if I know my man got another woman all the way across town and I don't say nothing about it, that means I'm accepting of it. You deserve so much more. And so what you begin to do is to say, well, and be Nan. And, and Veronica said, it's slim pickings out here. At the same time, you have to be able to choose and decide. Is my self-worth worth some sex? Because that's all homeboy probably had with some good sex. Is my self-worth, my value system worth good sex? And many times you ain't even getting that. You got somebody just splitting the bills with you. He ain't even paying all of them. He's splitting them with you. <laughs> he a roommate. Okay? And then he, across town, paying somebody else mortgage or paying their rent and he's splitting bills with you. Okay. And you saying to yourself, well, it's just so tight. It and be nan. And you sitting up here Saturday night talking to the computer and talking to these ladies and, and you were at home waiting for him to come home. And you know, he done been all out with everybody else. And then when he come in, he want to go straight to sleep because he done been out having sex all night or all day. And he tight. And he want to come in the house and see what you done cook for dinner. Okay. So stop trying to say one worse than the other. We have got to be able to say. Like my girl up here who said that she lost her husband with the overalls. Okay. I got to find her because she was, she showing up, put some game on, on me. And she said she that she lost him. Felicia. Felicia said, listen, you'll never know real love if you don't experience it. And a lot of us ain't experiencing it. You know what we're experiencing? Well, it's Ann beat Nan. Who the hell said Ann beat Nan? Who the hell said Ann beat Nan? A fool. You deserve so much more. That young lady is married, allegedly, and is consenting to her man being in a relationship with another man and now she's saying i got a husband and a fiance why because i'm willing to accept anything because i'm tired i have trauma bonded to somebody 
And I rather have a piece of a man than no man. And then we talk about Latia talking about walking STDs. Girl, it's some women on here, and we know people forget an STD. They, they their husband got a whole nother family in a whole nother uh, 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 city. They got uh, STD. They got KIDs, KIDSs. Okay, a whole nother flesh and blood with half his DNA while he married it. Okay, so you know my point was not to shame anybody but let you know that their degrees of unacceptable behavior that may be a 10 but a five ain't no better and what we got to do is realize i ain't got to accept that i ain't got to accept five six seven eight nine and damn sure not ten i ain't got to accept that because what do we know? And my girl said it. She said, a man with them overalls, Miss Felicia, she said, listen, hold out. So a man can say, how can I make your life better? She didn't just get there like that. Were you married to some man and he got a fiance who is a man? She ain't just wake up no morning and say, oh, I'm going to marry a man and he's going to want to be with another man. We're going to be a happy family. You get beat down so much that you start accepting what you don't deserve. It's kind of like the color purple. When Celie said, the man said, what should I do? Celie said, beat her, beat her. Here she was in an abused relationship and she is encouraging someone, another man to abuse a woman because this woman is acting out. Because we get tired. And what we end up doing is giving up. And they know your life is too wonderful to have to endure and experience rejection, sharing. You, you, you got to, you're too good of a woman. But the problem is your values are screwed up. You got the same values you did when you was 20 years old. He got to have, you know, six pack and you know, he got six, pack, he has a big muscle and he got to have that six pack down there and he got to smell good and he got to be wearing Versace and Dorachi and the Lucci and Wucci and he got to be tall and he got to have pretty white teeth. Girl, you 40, you 50. What are you talking about? Ain't talking about no credit score. Ain't talking about a man being monogamous. Ain't talking about a man having a relationship with God. You talking about things that are superficial. And then what happens is, is that when you get that monster, you can't feed him enough. You can't give him enough sex. You can't do enough freaky deed with him. Because one woman, he will never be satisfied with. Them kind of men, you'd be like, okay, I see you over there, player. Okay, run from them, girl. Girl, run from that one. Okay, run from them. Because a lot of the men that you know that's like that, they're going to settle down when they need a nurse or they need a purse. But while they good, they don't want you. They monsters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, anybody over 30, uh, I don't like, and I'm 60. That's all funny and dandy to, you know, you got to go to dialysis and ain't nobody going to come pick you up and you and you got to try to call Lyft or something. See, that then it don't get cute no more. See, then you're going to call one of your reliable church members. Is she a good woman. She be cooking me some dinners and getting me back to health and taking me back and forth to dialysis and my treatment. I'm going to go and call Miss Bonda. Oh, no, you don't, buddy. Slow on down there, right? You going to go call uh, 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 Miss Young Thing, okay? Because I ain't got nothing for you. I'm not taking nobody and, and take got to take you to doctor and taking you dialysis and cooking you. I don't got no time for that. Huh? You better go, you know, call uh, Shay Shay and them because Bond is not doing that. Okay? I'm not going to get no Uber. I'm uh -uh, being no Uber, boo boo. Uh uh. Listen, okay? And that's the real. Because let me tell you something. When these old men get sick, them young girls running from them, not running to them. 
Okay. And then them old men trying to figure out who they can go lay up with so that they can oppose their will on so that they got somebody that's then go sit around there with them. Ain't nobody got time for that. But there are people out here that just like we're talking about killing, they say, you know what? I just want to be in a good relationship and have a good woman. But you got to learn to attract those men. You, 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 you run into five of them every day. But you be like, ooh, I ain't look at him. He ain't my type. Mm, he got Velcro shoes on. Uh, 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 uh. You looking at the ones that got them gators on and them Louboutins and you know the Karachis and all. Girl, stop. Anybody that's dressing better than me, I ain't got time for. Because, see, I know you are you dressing like that to attract a woman so that you can have a multitude, so you can have a harem, and you got a, 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 a woman for every day. That ain't, I'm not trying to be on no rotation. That ain't what I do. I see you, player. Go handle your business. Okay? But I ain't got nothing for you. Okay? Period. And he probably ain't got nothing for me either. Okay? My point being to you, it's time to start changing your values. Let me tell you this, right? I'm trying to drink more water. I put um cucumber in it. It's got a good taste. It's a woman. I don't know what her name is, okay? And she a grandma. And she is 93 years old on TikTok, okay? And she got a massive following. A little older white lady. She got a boyfriend. She said she ain't had a boyfriend in 22 years. She said, but she got a boyfriend now. And they go to the senior citizen place. I think she's 93 and I think he's 90. Okay? But she just like, I'm not accepting no, no mess. Okay? But now she got a man. Now, if the 93-year-old grandma can get a man. Okay? And she putting her little lipstick on and looking so cute. You can too. But I tell you what that 93 year old grandmama ain't doing. She not accepting somebody that's just going to put her through hell just to be able to say she got a man. She said for 22 years, a man ain't even been in her home. Okay? 22 years. Now she going out on dates. It seems like they go out on a date every day. But I know they at least go out three or four times a, a, a week. And he coming in, opening the door for everything. But dang, she had to wait till she 93. God will give you back them years that you lost. That's what the Bible saying. I believe that. And the Quran and the Torah do too, probably. If you wait on the Lord and ask the Lord to order your steps and give you the kind of man that you deserve by saying what, what you will not accept with from a man except to be a good man, you'll get that man. I don't care what age it is. Because let me tell you something. I would rather have a man a good man that loved me for a year, then a man is going to raise hell in my life for 20. I just, I just don't want none of it. Just raising hell. You know what I'm saying? Problem after problem. But you married, but, but you've been miserable for 20 years. I'd rather have one good year. That's what Felicia said up here. Uh, Miss Bennett, you know what she said? At least I know what it felt like to be loved. Okay? But this woman, 93, ain't got a man. My point being to you ladies, you have to make a decision on what things are important to you and you have to learn to attract that. And let me tell you what happened. I had my second child, I think I'm saying 32, 33, something like that. My body didn't get back into form right. I hated diet pop. I hated it. But I said, I love, I want to lose weight, and I love pop. So I started drinking it. Now, that's all my desire is for. I can't drink regular pop. It's too sweet. Train your body. Train your mind to attract to what's good for you instead of what's good to you. See, it's easy to attract to what's good to you. Okay, it's hard to attract to what's good for you 
was good too. You got them pretty white teeth. You know, he got that white beater on. He got them, you know, Chanel shoes on. He looking good. That's what's good to you, but it ain't good for you. And if you start to write down, the Bible said, write it down and make it plain of what you want in a man. You will then ask the Lord to bring those men into my life. After a period of time, you will not even attract to them slicks no more. Them slicks will be like, oh, yeah, how you doing? Boo? So I don't know. Okay, cool. All right. Huh? The only thing a slick man can do with me is give me some conversation. We can do business together. But a slick man can never be my man. I don't even know. No, nah, you too sleep, baby. But that's okay. I'm gonna be nice and we do business and stuff. I'm with that. But as far as a relationship, no, because I already know what, what you about. But when you start to work on yourself, okay, just shut everybody down. Work on you. Work on changing your diet, your sleep habit, your worship. Work on you. When you begin to work on you, reading self-help books, going to see a therapist, working on you, being the best person that you are, you will not attract to somebody who is toxic and who is unable to have a meaningful relationship. They just will not come up on your radar. You like, that's my boy. But you're like, oh, no, girl, uh -uh, I've been delivered from that. And that's how you're able to be in a situation where a good man can find you. But you got to work on you. But uh-uh, because if I work on me, uh-uh, wait a minute, uh-uh, hold up a minute. If I work on me, oh, wait a minute, oh, this is my biological clock. Oh, wait a minute, hold up a minute. Girl, time out for that. What well, God got for you, got for you. Okay? Uh, I'm thinking the other day, well, one of the judges of Lance and had a baby, had a set of twins at 55. So what well, God got for you is for you. Okay, just come on. Stop trying to be little God over your life. Well, my biological time, uh, Clock is running. Girl, stop. What God got for you is for you. Okay, so stop that. But what you got to do is clean out the garbage in your head, in your desires. Get rid of that. Many of you all don't even desire to eat certain things anymore. You've been delivered from that. You don't snack all night. You stop doing that. You're living a better way. Part of that is being able to have boundaries and have a checklist of what you are attracted to. Well, I got one. I got you. You ready for this? I'm doing that. I am. Seriously. I got my checklist. But it just seems for some reason, you know, a month turned into two months, turned into six months, a year, two years, three years. It's like that man's not going to come. Let me tell you something about God. God will give you a period of rest so that you can get your head right. So that when he puts you in a situation where your blessings overtake you, you will have the endurance and the fortitude to maintain them. Sometimes God just holding you and say, daughter, I'm about to make you an, the first millionaire in your family. But for three or four years, I need you to sit down, focus on your health, focus on your body, focus on eating right. Because the next five years, your blessings going to overtake you. And if you don't work on these things, you ain't going to know how to handle yourself. And all God is doing is giving you a, a time out to prepare. And you worried about meeting uh, 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 Boaz. God talking about elevating you and make you the first millionaire in the family. God talking about opening businesses to you. 
And you sitting up here worrying about Boaz. God, you in a hole, you holding me for something. God ain't holding you back. That's for sure. But God is just saying, catch your breath. You've been working so hard. You've been worrying too much. Catch your breath. Because you're in a season where I need you to go on walks. Commune with me. Eat good. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Because this next season, when I release this blessing on you, if your mind ain't right, this blessing going to be a curse. Daughter, you got to be ready for it. I think that I shared with you, there was a period of time, uh, maybe two years uh, before I left the bench. Uh, it just was a very, I was alone. And I was believing that the enemy was telling me, you buried, God said you planted. I said, huh, well, what's the difference? He said, when you plant something, you put it in the ground, it's by itself, it's dark, it's desolate because you're being hidden so you can get stronger. I'm hiding you in darkness so that you can grow. So you get your mind right. So you get your spirit right. So that you can work your body. See, I need you to grow. I need you to get strong. And if I have you in the light, and have you around other men and, and your girls that want to hang out with you. You can't be as strong as what I need for this next season. So, so I, I got to bury you so that nobody is around. Nobody can touch you or harm you so that you can get stronger. And every day, you're getting stronger. You're learning about your weaknesses. You're learning about your strength. You're learning how to depend on me. I need you to grow. I need you to grow. Now, everybody else think you buried. You done. You garbage. You threw. God planted you. As you get stronger, you bust up through that dirt. And baby, it's on and popping. Because I never believed that God would allow me who got a paycheck all my life to become an entrepreneur. I never thought that God would allow me to be able, no matter how short it was, on national TV. I never believed that God would allow me to be able to have a platform to come and to share my experiences uh, with other women to empower them for growth. But God was planting me for this next season. And so now I say to myself, girl, you running your business. You trying to encourage people on social media. You just spending time with God. You got your family. How are you doing this? Because in that planted time, God strengthened me for the next season. And that's what he's doing for you. He's not angry. He's not mad at you. He's giving you a time out so that you can be stronger for this next season. So that when people see you, they say, girl, how you oh, and doing my podcast with my bishop? Girl, how you do all of that? You got a podcast. You jump on here every Saturday. You, 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 you're an entrepreneur, you know, you, you, you're, a, you're a mom, you know what I'm saying? You're a, a grandparent to, to your fur baby. How do you do that? Because God strengthened me. And so instead of looking at the darkness as being buried, know you blend. God is birthing businesses into some of y'all. You worried about Boaz. God talking about you about to open a business that you never, that you dreamed of, but you never had the courage to do. And you worried about Boaz. And, and, and laying up with Bo Hooker. And God like, damn, here we go again. Ah, 
How many of y'all got children that you wanted to give something to? And you needed to wait to see their maturity to give it to them. And right when you was about to give it to them, they mess up. And you got to put it back in the drawer. You say, you ain't worried about it. I got a ring. And I want to give it to my child. But every time I look around, she losing, because I got daughters. I'm just using this as a hypothetical. She losing a bracelet. She losing a watch. She, I can't give it to her. That's what God is saying to us. You got a seven-year-old, Catrice. You know what I'm saying? You like, shoot, I want to buy you a 10-speed. I want to do this. I want to do But you, if you overwhelm her, it's not good. So you got to hold it back. That's what God's doing for us. Because in your season of you being planted, you're worrying about both. Bo, Bo, Boaz, and you playing with Bo hookup. I like, damn, I had the business over here for her, but I'm gonna wait. Because if you what I need you to do is understand that you are planted. Stop accepting what you don't deserve and stop thinking that God has forsaken you. He hasn't. And what God has for you, no man, no beast or fowl is going to prevent. But I tell you who will is you. Because God is tired of giving you, blessing you. And that blessing ends up being a curse because you have not become responsible your values, your morals, the way you live, the way you conduct yourself. It's not pleasing to God. You're still childlike. You still, you, 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 you're 50 years old, but you got the mind of a, of a 19 year old. And he can't release them blessings on you. So what I need you to do is to work on you. And whatever the desire of your heart is, whether it's to have that Boaz or that, have the business or whatever God got for you. Just know this. You not being buried. You're being planted. Take this time to use it wisely. Because let me tell you something. I never thought that God would allow me to do the things that he has. But what he saw was that I was doing right by getting my head right, by eliminating different things in my life, getting rid of the bow hookups, always designed to be in a relationship, stop drinking, stop smoking, get rid of that, start eating right, start sleeping right, get rid of that, spending time with him, get rid of that so that I can let these blessings overtake you. And when that happens, let me tell you, Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. You look up and say, what? Look at Judge Judy. She didn't get discovered till she was 60 something. And she a multimillionaire. But God may have had to wait to reveal her in a season to get her mind right. So I want you to challenge you with that. Start, you know, improving yourself. But it starts with having boundaries. It starts with saying this, I'm not going to accept this anymore. I'm not no longer submitting to what I don't deserve. I'm not going to do it anymore. You have survived things that would have killed people. Many of you all on here have buried your child. You have had challenges with your child, with your husband, with your wife. You've been, you've been doing a lot, but you're still standing. And God wants this latter part of your life to be the best part of your life. Because you deserve it. Because you have sacrificed. You have put others' needs before yours. You have waited. Now it's time for God to bless you. But you got to get you right. I was listening the other day to Kwame and he was saying 
that many people say, well, why didn't Barack release you? He said, had Barack released me in 2016, I wouldn't be in front of the computer. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I had to surrender. And when I surrendered, then God was ready. Your time ain't God's time. Some of y'all might not even get a husband till you over 60. That's God's time. Well, God, why'd you make me wait this long? I've been wanting a husband for 20 years. You wasn't ready for one because you was you was entertaining both hookups. You weren't ready for no more ass. Many of y'all talking about you want a man. You wouldn't know what to do with the right man. You bypass a good man every day. You bypass five or six of them because he ain't my type. Because he don't wear Chanel. Because he uh, don't got a six pack. Because he don't got white teeth. Superficial things. You bypassing a good man every day. Change your values. And you'll change your life. Stop looking at superficial things. He got to have money. He got to have good sex. He got to, uh, you know, make when I be with him, he got to, you know, make my stomach blood. Girl, come on. You grown. You all of that grown. You got grandchildren grown. You got teenagers grown. And you sitting up here talking about somebody making your stomach flutter and know how to work that thing on you. Girl, stop. Seriously. It's time to grow up and put away childish things and be able to enjoy the life that God wants to give to you. He don't want to see you struggle. He don't want to see you unhappy, but you putting yourself in situations because you keep making bad choices. Katrina says she's 44 years old grown. Boo, bring it with the Velcro, bring it with the overalls, with the 750, 800 credit score and say, put all your bills in the middle of the table and let daddy pay for them. That's the kind of man I'm talking about. That's a grown and sexy. Put all your bills in the middle of the table. And I'm going to take care of them. When you wake up in the morning and they tell you it's 10 inches of snow, ain't going to be none outside your house. Because I done came over with my overalls and my pickup truck and thought enough to shovel your snow while you were sleeping. I thought enough to cut your grass when it was 100 degrees. So when you woke up in the morning, you saw how pretty your grass was. I didn't want to disturb you getting your beauty sleep. But I came over in my pickup truck and my bell crawls. Love on that kind of man. Love on that kind of man. Not the ones that say, come on to the bar and let me get you a double shot of Henny and then want to get you drunk and then slip in your drawers. No. No. Time out for that. Okay. Nay, grandma said, how many more he sleeping with? Baby, you know you on rotation. You said, but I was just good for me. And then you sitting up here thinking about the 30 days. God like, mm, that's okay. Whew, slept another blessing. But ladies, it's time to stop submitting to what you don't deserve. And it's time to get your life together. And remember, your planet, you ain't buried. All right now. I love y'all. Till we meet again. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. God bless. I hope your team wins tomorrow too <laughs> in the uh, Super Bowl. <laughs>